everything changes. Hey, and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we're going to do a video on cardiopulmonary. And I noticed there wasn't a lot of stuff on YouTube about our job and career field. And for those of you just joining in the military and you're wondering about enlisted medical jobs, this is one of the best ones. So we wanted to give you an overview because everything online is pretty confusing about our job. So we're going to break it down for you. And each of us has something different to talk about. So we're keeping this super simple for those of you that just want an overview of the job and you're thinking about joining. So our career field is called cardiopulmonary. It's a long word and it's actually broken up into three different career fields. So we have cardiology, pulmonary, and respiratory. So we're gonna to talk to you about how, um, what day-to-day -day life is like in the job in each section, what tech school is like, how long tech school is, what credentials you get, what can you expect when you get out of the military, and then uh, basically what, what kind of what our deployments are like, that sort of thing. So we're just gonna wing it. So I work cardiology and yep, yep, this is what we do. So what you can expect in cardiology, cause it's uh, clinic hours, we usually work seven to four in this department and we do things like stress tests, which are on these treadmills here. Uh, we do EKGs, other procedures like cardioversions and some cool stuff like that in the cardiology department. So in our career field, you could put be put anywhere, cardiology, pulmonary, or respiratory. So now Gaddis is going to talk to you about pulmonary because that's where she works. Oh man, oh man. Oh man. Okay, hello everyone. So like Sergeant Condor said, I work in the pulmonary section. In the pulmonary section, we do a wide variety of different tests to assess your lung function, pretty much PFTs, um, any exercise-induced asthma studies, provocoline tests, bronchoscopies, yeah. clinic work, all of that is done within the pulmonary section. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pass this off because that was really quick to Erin Thompson here. She's gonna talk to you about respiratory. So I'm gonna talk to you about the best section we deal with here. It's respiratory. <laughs> it's the best section out of all three of them. Oh, yeah, they will yeah. tell you it was. <laughs> so basically respiratory is the inpatient side of our job. So in cardiopulmonary, you can work the clinic hours, which is like seven to four or whatever your MTF wants to do. But when you work respiratory, you usually work 12 hour shifts. So you'll work Panama schedules. So you might work two days, then two days off. It's a pretty legit schedule. It's pretty cool. Basically respiratory is anything to deal with breathing but you have to get credentials so you have to get a CRT or an RRT. Uh, I'm gonna talk to you some more about some of the requirements to come into our career field in the Air Force. For the most part everyone already has college most people that come in here already have their bachelor's degree I only have an associate so you can do an associates but most of them already have some kind of advanced uh, college. So you're gonna need your basics out the way math English and all that stuff and um, once you get in the military you'll go through our tech school and then you'll get your associate's degree, which you'll be able to test your CRT with. Okay, so we just basically talked about cardiopulmonary. We still have a few things to cover, like tech school, because I know you're concerned about that. But just to gather everything back together, we said that cardiopulmonary is broken up into three different career fields, pretty much. Cardiology, pulmonary, and respiratory. You can be put in any of those sections after you're trained on all of those sections. So that's what we're going to talk about next is the training portion from basic training, tech school, all the way to your first base, and then upgrade training and how long that takes. So here's Gaddis. Okay, I'm back. I'm going to talk to you about tech school. Pretty much for our tech school, we have one of the longest, if not the longest, tech schools out of any medical career field job that we offer. So pretty much for us, everybody will start off at Fort Sam Houston, which is located in San Antonio. You'll do three months of training there, and that's basic classroom work, learning everything that you need to know to kind of even get you started to begin with. If you're anything like me, I came in, I did school for business, I didn't know anything about medical. That's where you're going to learn. You're going to start off there. From there, you'll go to your phase two of training, and that's pretty much, what, nine months? Is it nine months? Mm -hmm. Nine months. Oh, I got my finger over the camera. Okay, let's move. So that's nine months of training, and that's where you'll pretty much continue all of your book work, go a little bit more in depth, get a little bit more advanced, and you'll also get some hands-on. After that, you'll go to your phase three, which is really just your OJT, which stands for on-the-job training, and you'll do that once you go to your base that you'll actually be assigned to. Other things that we do here is, uh, since we do work pulmonary cardiology and all those things, while you're in the military, you can get all kinds of certifications that deal with your, our job. We can get 
um, cardiology certifications, cath lab certifications, uh, CPFT, which is the pulmonary certifications. You could also get things on asthma, um, many advanced critical care options, and uh, which me leads me to our deployments. Uh, we have two ways to deploy. We have EMIT or CCAT. CCAT? CCAT? <laughs> Critical oh care, air transport. Everyone likes that one the best. Uh, well, not not everyone, but for the most part, we love it here the best. Um, CCA is uh, a lot of air transport. So whenever a patient uh, is out there deployed and gets hurt, they get taken to a facility, which is usually the EMED facility, and that's where they do basic or the, the first level of care. They'll make sure that they're stable, that they'll make sure that they're not bleeding or anything like that. Once they're stable, then they'll call a CCAT team, which will fly in, pick up the patient, and then take them back to a more stable facility, which uh, usually is Germany, Japan, um, San Antonio. So big bases, okay? And that is it for our deployments. Uh, those are the only two ways we can deploy. There's also humanitarian things you could do or uh, TDYs, but Whenever you come into this job, you will either go into CCAM or into EMEDS. Hey guys, I hope you found this video really informative and thanks so much for watching. Please comment below with any questions that you might have. Make sure you subscribe and good luck to all of you. So if you can't breathe, we help you breathe. Um, if you have issues breathing, we help you breathe. Uh, we give you maneuvers to help you breathe. Basically anything having to do with breathing. <laughs> um, 